Hello guys, me again, Nigel here with you, another product review and this is now the fairly new Hong Kong Models 148 scale B25 GA Mitchell glazed nose and uh, this is a 148 scale and it's part of the Mitchell series I think they've only done one haven't they at the moment in 48 so no doubt we'll get the strafer and the cannon nose and, and, and all that sort of stuff we'll get all the different ones no doubt so um I was at Telford yesterday. Today's the 13th of November 2023. I was at Telford yesterday, or Scale Model World, and um, I was there on the HK model stand chatting to Neil, and uh, he said, we take this and review it. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right, I don't mind. So um, it's, uh, I've had a quick look in the box. It's very, very nice. I haven't opened anything or been through the instructions or anything. I just had a very quick look, and it does look very, very nice. I've got the old Accurate Miniatures kit in the itinerary box, in, which I believe is very nice. But I know Will Patterson built it and had a lot of trouble with very poor fits and stuff. So um, I don't know if he just had a bad kit or if it's a bad kit to start with. But uh, I've never, ever built it. I've had it for bloody years. So... Um, this is uh, kit number 01F008, it's from H Kong, Hong Kong Models, it's 428.6mm wingspan, 345mm long and it has 249 parts. Looking around the box as we normally do, we have the CAD images there of the model built up, I would rather see photographs of the real thing. CAD images don't show you ejector pin marks, poor fits and stuff like that. But that's not generally a problem, is it, with Hong Kong models? It's not generally an issue um, is, you know, ejector pin marks and bad fitting. Generally, the fit of these kits is very, very good. A lot of the times you don't even need glue. I mean, it's, yes, of course, you're going to glue it, but they do fit very well. And their clear parts are just out of this world. Um, the issues we have with Hong Kong models, as you know, which I have to come back, is, is little tiny inaccuracies and stuff and stuff that just doesn't look right. But then other people argue that it does look right. So is it right? Is it wrong? Who knows? Uh, so we got here some description about what the, what the kit is and uh, what you need to, to build it and everything. End of the box here. Can't even focus. We can see we've got the same artwork as we have on the front and on the side here. We have the two options that we get in the box and um, we have here. B25J 11NC, serial number 36041, 501st Bomber Squadron, 345th Bomber Group, Taclo Band, late A, January 1945. So that's a beauty, and it's not in natural metal, so that's probably the one I'll go for. And then B25J 2NC, serial number 4327559, 380th Bomber Squadron, 310th Bomber Group, Naples, Italy, late spring 1945. So um, there we go, you've got two two vastly different kits there or two like vastly different aircraft to choose from i actually have the art scale kit decals for this in 25th scale to do australian which i don't want to do i like to do if it's an american aircraft i like to do american and unfortunately the decals i've got for the american version are all out of register the the carrier film is right off the off, off the actual decals so um I, so I can't use this, so I'll have to do probably that one. Anyway, so there we go. And oh dear, <laughs> in cooperation with AK. So um, basically, we'll have to do a lot of cross referencing. But you get yourself something like what have I got here? This is a a MIG ammo one conversion chart, and you can convert to all those colours there. You can find stuff online, but be very very careful because I find, as you know, with my chieftain. Um, a, 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 a colour was called up, a Meng colour, which is made by AK, and um, 249 or something for the brown, which actually turned out to be like a whole red colour. So be be careful with the call-outs, is all I would say. So in here we have um, model all rattling around, but all individually bagged and everything. Uh, as you can see, the box could have been smaller, but hey-ho. Um, maybe they're planning a kit with all the extras in it or something, so they need a bigger box. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's all individually bagged. We have a weight there for the nose, which is always nice with a glass nose model because it's always difficult to get the, the weight in there. So we've got a sprue there, a clear parts. There will be no issue with these whatsoever. They will be beautiful. There may be accuracy issues, <laughs> um, but the actual clear parts themselves are some of the best in the industry. And also they have, I don't know if you can see it in there, but there's a protective film on them, which is a really nice touch. There's a piece on there. There's a piece across there, and that's it. It doesn't matter on the nose because it's not clear on the front. Uh, and here the sprue's protecting it. So really, really cool. Got two different types of um, canopy as well there. 
So one's got the little side piece and the other one hasn't. Uh, we have two fuselage halves, very nice. Some bits and pieces here, so that's obviously particular to the glass nose. So the strafer is going to get a different nose. We have guns there. Uh, they're slide molded so you can fit the barrels in. You can get aftermarket barrels should you wish. Uh, and then we have, in fact I have some. I have some very old aftermarket barrels. I might use them. So we have the wings there, which is very nice. You can see sensibly packaged back to back so nothing's going to get damaged. Uh, we have bombs. More machine guns and more barrels. We have wheels, tyres, cowlings, engine back plate. Looks like we've got the um, cowling flap supports on there as well. I did ask Neil yesterday if he just downscaled the 30 second scale. And he kind of, mm, no, not really, but uh, we shall see. But uh, the engines look very nice. And they're not, you don't even have to glue the house together. The engines are moulded as one piece, which is nice. And then here we have two sprues in together. And as you can see, again, back to back, so no damage is going to get caused. So we've got bomb bay there, we've got cockpit floor, uh, we've got control columns, there's the bulkhead there. Very nice indeed. More guns. So we've got about a million guns with this kit. Oh yes, look at that. Decals face down in the bottom of the box on top of the instructions so they can't get damaged. Yes. So many manufacturers do that and then put the sprues on top and the sprues go like that and, and damage them. So, yeah, very nice indeed. Lovely decals, uh, printed by Cartograph, so that's cool. Uh, she's engaged. Cactus Kitten. We've got an Indians there, so we'll look at them in a minute. And then we have the massive Hong Kong Models instruction book. These, to, For me, these things are a little bit too big. Um, they're a bit too big to have on the bench with you while you're modelling, particularly if you've got a small bench. I'm lucky I've got a massive space to my left. But... Um, some people haven't, they've got like a little area like this to work within. So having these massive instructions is a bit of a pain. But then if they were small like Model Collect, we'd complain about that as well, wouldn't we? Well, I would. And then in the bottom of the box here, we have a beautiful artwork of the box front, which is very, very nice. Uh, illustrated by um, Peter Fokashevich. <laughs> Mark said his name yesterday, I can't pronounce it properly. But he does a lot of the artwork for Mark. Um, and he does books as well. He does a lot of artwork and, and him and uh, Neil do a lot of work together. So that's very nice indeed. What I did notice, which was very interesting on here, when you look at this one, this panel here is glazed. When you actually look on the side of the box here, you can see that panel there is actually painted in. So there's obviously an accident, a mistake on the side of the box. And then we've got that. I'm not going to get it out of this packet, but there's the weight there. And it's quite a considerable weight and that's going to fit underneath the floor I'm guessing in the nose so very nice that they've included that very very thoughtful indeed because as I say with these glass nose aircraft it's always difficult the 132nd scale one you don't get weights for the nose I've actually bought the uh, PM not PM what are they called the company in Poland that makes them I bought them uh, profit profi model profi model I think, it's, I think they're Polish profi model do they do the um they do the nose weights for the 132nd so you can get plenty of uh, you get just put them in there and that's it you don't have all balls rattling around and everything because the last thing you want is balls rattling around so i'm gonna have to move the camera up to fit this bloody book in there we go right so hopefully you'll be able to see what's going on now, i haven't got the light on above me because we'll get loads of glare i expect yes we will so uh, we'll leave the light off so here we've got some history about the aircraft, which is very nice. We've got the legend here, drilling holes and bending and filling holes and all sorts of stuff. And we've got the aircraft up there with, uh, with a lovely colour image again. So going into the massive book, this thing is huge. Uh, this is, well, here is an A5 cutting mat. So it's bigger than A4 on each page. So this is bigger than A3. So yeah, it's big. Um, so we've got here, we've got the, this is the upper turret with the seat and everything. You've got the ammo boxes there. We've got the pilot seats going in here. I remember there was an issue because if you bought the HGW or the Edward seat sets, it was a seat correction. And one of the seats in the J is not the same as the other. So I'm not sure if this is correct or not. It may be correct for a certain version. I'll have to get my, I've got a big thick B25, but we'll have to get the references out and have a look. But if I do build this, I'll just build it out of the box anyway. Um, I'll probably re replace the gun barrels. 
So they're telling us to drill a hole here in the uh, cockpit floor, which indicates there's going to be other versions coming because there's going to be other versions that don't have a hole there. Um, so instrument panel going in. Do we have a decal for the instrument panel? I didn't notice. Uh, yes, we do. We have a decal for the instrument panel. Um, but I can't see it telling us to put the decal on anywhere. Maybe it was an afterthought. Uh, so we've got the seats going in, control columns, and then we've got this bulkhead going on to the back of the uh, main cockpit. All of this is going to be... A is... I do like this with HK. They put that on the back of the book, so it's easy to turn to. So we've got an aluminium floor, or an aluminium floor, and then all of this is L, and L is yellow-green. <clears throat> okay. So that's like a zinc chromate green. And then this is all F, which is dark dull green. So that's like a bronze green colour. So you have to be, it's going to look really interesting inside, but be careful what colours you're using. I would imagine they change throughout the war, depending on what period you're building. Although these are both late, very late. Um, so we've got bombs here going in. We've got six bombs going in the bomb bay on the moulded on racks on the side. So you don't have lots of separate pieces. That's just going to be simple. We've got this photo etch piece going in here. I don't know why. Uh, and that's going to be inside the bomb bay. We've got a pin going in there, look. And then we're going to assemble the bomb bay ends and roof together. So we don't have all the extra detail in there like you get in the in the 132nd one. Um, and then we've got sway, sway bars there for the doors by the look of it. We've got detail going in there. And then we're going to be adding detail inside the fuselage. We've got the guns going in the sides. Don't put the barrels on, just fit the guns. You, you might not even want to fit the guns yet you can put them in from the outside afterwards they're just going to get broken and then we've got the um i'm assuming that's going to be lights there uh e parts are going to be clear are they no nope. not sure what that is there um might be just blanking holes and then we've got more detail going in here and same on the other side bits and pieces there it's telling us to paint the cockpit walls uh, so they're going to be the bronze green and c is black so got black panels in there um, this is a which is aluminium so the bomb bay is going to be all aluminium I thought the bomb bays were green but never mind uh, we can check all that out so going over the page we're going to add all of this into the fuselage you know, the tail gunner going in there that's all been assembled there and then we've got these glass panels going in you might not want to fit them yet you might want to put them in after you fit the well you're going to have to put them in after you fit the guns uh, it's nice that they've got the gaiters there for the guns that's cool very nice indeed um, then we're building up the tail assembly, adding that onto the fuselage along with our chosen canopy, upper turret. And we've got some bullets and fairings, or we've even, we can blank it off if we want. So there we go. And then we've got the, um, that is the upper turret assembly there. Looks very, very simple, but in 48 scale, I'm sure it'll be fine. And then we've got more gun placements on the sides. This thing's a proper fortress, isn't it? Bomb doors here open, crew entry door open. You've got the DF loop there. Uh, we've got uh, ammo ar armor plates going on the side so we can use plastic or the photo etch ones. Uh, side armored versions use install E23 to E24. So it looks like that thin plate will just be a normal metal plate, whereas this is going to be a thicker armored plate. So make sure you know which ones you're building. Again, this is the thing you see, it's not telling you which version is which. It's not saying A or B. Um, here it's saying version A. So if you're doing version A, you may choose to have the side guns or not. So version B doesn't have them. And version A does. So version B doesn't have them. Version A does, but you might decide to not have them. I would imagine they would have taken them off and put them back on and stuff like that. And um, we're doing the same down here. And this is with everything all closed up now. So there we go. So you've got the option of having everything all closed up or having it all open. I would personally have it all open and show all the detail inside. Building up our engines, very, very simple because of those one-piece engines. Really nice construction there. And then we're going to add the cowlings and our props. I'm sure the cowlings are the right shape. Uh, and then we've got the wings going together. Very simple. There's no interior landing light detail or anything to go in there. Um, first paint the external surface with A and then C. A, so paint it aluminium and then C. Okay. I think the external part is going to be silver and the little bit in the middle is going to be C. It's like that matte black that you see on old motorcycles with the, the black cover over the um, over the headlamp bulb. So there we've got an air intake going in there. And then we're adding in our flaps. 
do we have the option of having the flap stand? Okay, this is interior flap detail. We're not adding any flaps yet. This, there's the flaps going in here, so I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, we do. We have the option of having the flaps down or um, retracted or extended. So that's cool. Special in instructions here for inserting the undercarriage legs by the look of it. Yeah, main landing gear strut must be installed into the wing before assembling the engine nacelle. So they tell you to put the that down and then and then put the nacelle down over it, I'm guessing. Um, I can't see what because of that side piece there. It won't go in with that on there, I guess. Um, and then again, we're doing the same on the other side. And then building up the cell, putting the undercarriage in and everything. Building up the nose now with the gun in there. So that's all very nice. Again, leave the barrels off. Um, fit the barrels after. You've got your ammo boxes going in there. And then you've got... We're doing it all again. So that's your four cannon. Well, five. One, two, three, four, five. So that's your five machine guns, or is that five machine guns and one cannon? And that's your two machine guns. So your you pays your money, takes your choice which one you want to do. Again, this is A, that's B. Okay, so if you're doing the, the green one, that's it with all the guns. Yes, let's have all the guns on there. But again, leave all the barrels off until the end. And then going over the page, we have this part of the assembly here. So this is the major sort of assembly now. So you're putting your wheel halves together and fitting those. You're fitting your wings to the huge large. You're fitting the, you don't need to glue the wings on. You're fitting your um, engines onto the nacelles. You've got your inner flaps going together there. Uh, it looks like you can have those working if you want to. Gun barrels going in there right at the end. So all very nice. We've got some antenna and bits and pieces going on. And then that's it. So it's a fairly simple build. There's not really a lot to it. So we've got a sprue call out, so as you can see, not a lot to it. We've got a decal sheet there, all the um, carrier film shown in pink. So there we are. And then there's version A, which is very nice indeed with the big Indian chief on the, uh, on the tail there. And then we've got cactus kitten, the little nose art on there. And with the red... Red um, rings around there, all chipped up, and that'll, that'll look great. And that is actually the box art version, which is that one there, which looks very nice indeed. And you can see on here they've got that window blacked out, painted over, and that one is clear. So, again, check your references and see what's what. They've got that one blacked out on here as well, look. Whereas here it's a window. I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. So, there we go. And we've got all our color call outs on the back. AK Interactive, and although it says AK on the box, thank you, Neil, you've still got Tamiya and Mr. Hobby, so that's great. That's really good. So bear in mind, this, this green for the interior, it is not interior green. It's like a bronze green, XF-26. Remember, this is a very late aircraft, so it's the same colour as your B-17 interior. But it looks like all the, the turret and everything is this one here, L, which is yellow-green, which is RC262, which is the uh, AK colour I've got, or you can mix your own. So that's, that's that colour there, the, the interior green we all know and love. Okay, so be very, very careful with that, because people, if you're going to put your model in a show, people will pick you up on it. So, and also check your references. Don't always assume that the colour callouts in there are correct for the aircraft you're building. So let's have a look at this kit and see what it's like. So we'll have the decals out first to see what they're like. Is this a resealable bag? Yes, it is. Good. So we'll get the decals out. See the way they've done this as well? So that when you pull the decals out, the sticky side is on the back. Remember that, manufacturers. Some don't do that, and you always risk picking up your decals as you pull them out. We'll get the photo etch stuff out as well. So we've got two photo etch frets, and they are wrapped in plastic. And as you can see, we've got some seat belts there which are very nice. What I need to do is get myself some black card. Here we go, that's better. So you can see now you've got the seat belts there. Um, we've got, a that's that panel that folds up in the bomb bay. We've got some straights there for the wings. And then over here we have our panels on the side. So these are obviously for a standard aircraft. And then if you can have the armour plating on there, you're going to use the thicker plastic parts. So very, very simple there. And then on here we've got our decal sheet, which as I say is printed by Cartograph. Um, and you can see even there, this is why they need to put them under the instructions really. You can see there we've got some, I don't know if you'll pick it up, let's actually get the light on now. 
um, you can see I've got some indentations there where it's been damaged by the plastic sprues but uh, at the end of the day it's you know it's, it'll be okay they're cartographed but they are as you can see they're covered in dents actually I catch it in the light you can you can see there as we look up it's absolutely covered in dents where the sprues have all been knocking about so um, there we go but, um, they are very nice not much in the way of stenciling, but um, ASK do a set of decals for this with stencils. So we've got our propeller stencils there, we've got our instrument panel there, uh, fuel filler there, but there are there are a lot more stencils than, than just those. And then here we've got our cactus kitten there, looking like Wonder Woman. And then there we've got the uh, She's Engaged little dolly bird on there. So there we are. Right, let's put these away so they don't get damaged anymore. We'll put a photo etch in there as well. We put it on top of the paper rather than between it and the decals. So we get that out of the way there. Right, let's have a look at some plastic. So, sorry about the rattly bags, guys. Okay, so back to one side. Put these screws over. It feels quite good actually, it feels like it doesn't need a wash, but I'll probably give it a wash anyway. So here we've got the, um, obviously the tail planes, we've got the fins and the rudders, we've got our elevators there. Here are our flaps, I'm assuming they are the flap internal details, and a few little odds and sods there. Tiny little bit of flash on there, but you know, nothing much to worry about. Surface detail, as always with Hong Kong models, is very nice indeed, you can see on there. Beautiful rivet detail. Let me get the light over so we get a bit of a shadow. You can see we have some lovely rivet detail. It's all recessed. It probably should be raised or not there at all or whatever, but it's there. It's detail. It's what makes our models look a little bit more lifelike. Um, we have some, these are single piece rudders. And we have some sinkage in those because they're so thick. But doesn't really matter because it looks quite realistic um, so yeah he's, he's done a great job there they're actually riveted I'm assuming they were metal um, but yeah they're they're molded in one piece so they're quite thick and hence we've got sink marks on them we've got Bombay doors there tiny little Bombay doors I'm used to 30 second scale and then we've got our um, elevators there nice thin trailing edges on them so yeah, very nice all uh, all together. And then our second sprue here, this is sprue E for what it's worth. Instrument panel, rudder pedals. Remember guys, this is 48, so it's gonna be a lot more combined. Uh, that's the um, tail gunners bit there. We've got the control columns, bulkhead. We have our nose wheel there by the look of it. Yes, that is our nose wheel. It looks huge for 48, doesn't it? That's almost as big as an A20 in 30 second scale. Um, we've got some pieces over here. It's fireworks going off again. It's now eight days past firework night. <sighs> I know people like to comment on my channel and say, your hobby is modeling, but their hobby is fireworks. And that's, that's all well and good. Um, but my hobby doesn't scare the living daylights of animals and, and disturb the peace and everything like these guys do. And like, why do they need to be doing it eight days after? I could understand yesterday because it was Duvali, but today, why? You know, it's, yeah. there's our upper turret there. And then here we have our, some ammo bins by the look of it. And then a host of machine gun breaches and barrels there. So they've got the molded on detail. And they are slide molded, so they have some detail in the ends, but at the end of the day, if you really want to set your model off, I think you're going to replace them with resin or brass. I've got resin and brass 48 scale barrels coming out of my ears, I think. So, um, yeah. Really nice. Let's say the seats look lovely, but I'm not sure if they're accurate. So, they, they were apparently wrong in the... Um, in the uh, 30 second scale one. But yeah, very nice. Next sprue here is, is, uh, I can't find the opening. There it is. 
So this is our engines basically, engines, props, cowlings and wheels. So this would also indicate maybe another version coming with different cowlings or whatever. Um, because they could just change the mould inserts there perhaps. So we've got some ports there for the undercarriage legs. We've got our main undercarriage legs there, look perfectly strong enough to support this model. They're very thick and chunky. Obviously we've got our propellers. Engines which have some nice detail on them. There's some nice fin detail on the cylinders. And they're one piece, you don't have to glue them together, which is a nice touch. We've got our cowl flaps there, they look like they're open. We've got the slits in the side rather than just moulded lines, which is nice. And then here we've got our flap, our uh, cowl flap actuators. And we've got the centre gearbox there, and we've got an area where if we want to, we can put some wires for detail on the engines. Wheels look very nice, flat spotted on the tyres, weight on wheels. Propeller blades are nice, there's no sink marks in them or anything. And the actual sprue connection, that's a good idea, is onto the back of the blade rather than on the edge. So you'll trim that off and then just sand the back of the blade and it'll be gone. Lovely. So very nice indeed. Air intakes there for the wings. Yeah. It's an impressive little kit this. Um, another bag here. We've got some, this is all armament. So we've got some more guns here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 850 cals and then eight barrels to go along with them. You can see those there. Again, I think you're going to replace those barrels to be honest. But yeah, they're slide molded as well, so the barrels will go in nice and easily. Just check if you're using aftermarket barrels. If they're bigger or smaller or they need to be deeper or whatever, make sure you drill them before you fit them. So, um, and it's a good idea to draw them while they're still on the sprue. It's a lot easier to hold and it's a lot easier to see if, you, if your drill is square. You know, if you, if you hold an individual barrel, an individual breech, it's easy to get it slightly out of line. But while it's like this, it's so obvious you can see if it's out of square with the rest of the sprue. So drill them while they're still on the sprue is my advice. And then we've got bombs. So they look very nice for 48 scale. Very simple. They don't have any props on the front. We don't have them on the photo etch, no. So, shame they don't have any little props on them. It'd be nice if we had some little photo etch props for the front, but uh, hey ho. You're not really going to see much of them anyway, and you might want to leave the bomb bay empty. But having said that, the bomb bay walls, which we'll see in a minute, have got all the, the racks moulded in, so they might not look that good. Um, but uh, put some bombs in it'll cover them up. But um, and make sure to paint your bombs and, do, and then weather them and do them all different shades because. Bombs never all look the same because they would have been at different ages and left outside and you know some would have faded in the sun been stood on some would have been under others so they would have got protected from the sun right so here we have our wings we've obviously got two sprues here which are pretty much identical but they're left and right obviously so here we have so we've got fabric ailerons, which are nicely done. We have our engine nacelles there. Very thin little air outlet panel there, which is nice. There's that blanking panel for the, if you want to do away with the upper turret. Uh, flaps. Maybe there's some riveting on there, look at that. There's a boatload of rivets on there. And then we've got all our access panels for the bottom of the wing. And then on the top we'll have fuel fillers here, here and here. And again, the rivet detail is lovely. And we've got that little bit of, sort of almost like dihedral on the upper wing because the, the inner part has dihedral and then the outer sort of looks like it has anhedral. So very nice, very nicely captured. I think it's a beautiful aircraft, the B-25. I've seen the one up at Chido, walked around it and that's uh, it's gorgeous. And then we have this little sprue here, so obviously, as I said earlier, this is all the nose parts. So when you get the strafers and that, you won't be getting this. But we've got some machine guns there for the inside. That looks like it's a cannon. Um, and then we've got some ammo boxes here, seat bases, floor, little control panel there for the bomber. And then obviously the, the bottom of the nose. We've got some ejector pin marks in there. 
but it does look like they're going to be covered up by the floor so that's cool you got some nice interior wall detail on there but yeah all in all looks like our bomb aiming device there and then you have two fuse large halves um, obviously not identical but very similar we don't need to get them both out so you can see here we're probably stuck in a hole somewhere yes there we go so fuse large half you've got these ejector tabs on here that one's gonna snap so i'm gonna cut it off so it doesn't remove any anything with it but that's very nice indeed very subtle surface detail there's some that this needs sanding it feels like raised rivet detail but it's not it's just a little bit of scuffing from the mold on the bottom the top's absolutely fine you see we've got subtle detail here it looks like i'm just trying to see if it's slide molded i don't think it is I can't necessarily see a seam, but, um, but it does have riveting on the top edge, but it's very, very subtle. It must be slide molded. I don't know how, how else they would have got that riveting in there, but I don't see a seam. Yes, there is. There is a seam. There it is there. You can see it. If I can catch it in the light, you can see it there. There's the seam. So it is slide molded. But they've done a very, very good job of getting the. That is fantastic. There is no. There is no seam on there. That the seam must be that panel line. I'm guessing. That is incredible. Unless it's only the. I don't know. It's. Uh, I can't see how they've got rivet detail on that face if you're moulding it just like that. Um, it's really, really nice. It must be slide moulding. It's lovely. Really, really lovely. Um, and it all looks, to me, it all looks so very fine in 48 because of the sound. I use the, I did 30 second mainly. That's a lovely little model. It's, it's, much easier to handle as well, isn't it? Maybe I should change to 48. But uh, yeah, very nice indeed. So, in the clear parts, finally, these are going to be amazing. Hong Kong models clear parts are always amazing. They're some of the best in the industry, I've got to be honest. Um, so we've got our, I'm not going to touch them because I don't get finger marks on. We've got our front, front piece here, this is going to be over our nose. We've got the front of the nose there. You've got the options of having the five or just the three guns. We have our clear cockpit canopies here. I'm not going to attempt to rip that tape off because I might crack the back of the part. But you can see this one here. This one here just has a plain windscreen on both sides, whereas this one over here has the horizontal bar and the vertical bar on the one side. There, you can just see that. Okay, so you uh, choose that for whichever version you're doing. I haven't got a clue what that is. That must be some kind of light or something. But they've made it as one piece. It's probably just one small part of it that remains clear. We've got the canopy for the tail gunner, the turret there. Again, it's got this protective sheet on it. You can see, and it keeps the parts absolutely gorgeous. The clear parts in the 132nd A20 are lovely. You can see on there the, um, you know, if I stick it on the instructions here, you can see how the, these side, you can't even see that they're so good. These side pieces here, they go on the side guns. Let me move the instructions. These pieces here, they're my fingers. When you put them on the white background with the lettering, you can hardly even see them. There's no distortion. Really nice. Um, you know, when you compare the Hong Kong model's Lancaster to the border model, the clear parts in the Hong Kong model are like a million times better. Uh, unfortunately, the canopy is slightly inaccurate. It has a shape issue on the top and the riveting is incorrect at the back. But the actual quality of the clear parts I'm talking about. 
Um, but yeah, really, really nice. So there we have it, guys. I'm going to get that back in the bag so we don't do any damage to them because they are lovely. So Neil asked me to take it and review it. And I said, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to build it or not. Mine, he said, that's all right. Don't worry. Just review it, please. So he wanted me to show you all that this kit is available. It is actually currently, if you're in the UK, it's available at Hannant's. I think it's $109.99. Maybe it's $119.99. So it's, it's not the cheapest B25 on the market, but without doubt, it's the, um, it's the nicest. I mean, it doesn't have all the interior detail that the Accurate Miniatures one has got, but the fit, I mean, we'll, we'll just quickly do a test fit here. I know we've got these tabs. The sprue tabs have been cut off. If you are getting this in a shop, I'd have a look before you take it to make sure that there's no damage where they've cut these tabs off. It looks like it's been done very carefully, but you may get the album where they've slipped and taken a chunk of the fuse of that jack, which you'll just have to fill. But, but um, we can see here that this is going to go together without an issue at all. Um, as I say, I mean, if you go and look at what's their names, the Australian company they've done a build of the a20 and he's, he's just pushing it all together and it's just all clips together but uh yeah as you can see it's going to go together lovely it's just beautiful i wasn't aware until i spoke to neil yesterday hong kong models have their own everything is in-house they have their own cad design center they have their own cad cam center and they make all their own tooling so you know people like you know, Wingnut Wings, for instance, they used to use different companies to send their tools out. And they used to use different companies to make the parts. The same as Airfix do, same as all the manufacturers do. I, I should imagine Tamiya are, are all in-house. But, um, yeah, so I was amazed to find that out. And uh, there we go. So that has been, let's just get this on here and start putting stuff away. That has been a review of the fairly new B25J Mitchell from Hong Kong Models. And uh, it's lovely. It looks like a really lovely kit and it looks like it'll go together very well as well. Very simple design, no fiddly little parts. It's going to be great for the newer model who wants a, a B25. Um, if you are a newer model and you can't run to this sort of expense, perhaps get the old Revell kit. Because I think from Will Patterson's, what he says, I think that Accurate Miniatures kit is, uh, is a bit of an handful. Not recommended for the newer modeler anyway. So there we go. Thank you for watching. Um, hope you've enjoyed that. Any questions, stick them down in the comments below. And I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.